It is the season to be jolly and year-end Christmas parties and office parties. This is their season too. And sadly, that also includes potential sexual harassment cases. Findings from Statistics South Africa show that in the last quarter of 2022, sexual harassment offences increased by 9.6%. Now, this is support, supported by the CCMA reports that workplace sexual harassment disputes are also on the rise. For more on this, I'm joined by Leila Musa, a senior associate in employment law practice at Cliff Decker Hofmeyer. Good to have you with us this afternoon, Leila. It's I, time for, so. great Leila, it's time for everybody to get together, celebrate the end of the year, get ready uh, for the Christmas season. But also during these Christmas parties, a lot can happen. And oftentimes you'll find that there may be issues of sexual harassment. But maybe let's start there with a definition of what sexual harassment is. Sure. Thanks very much. So I think the starting point is to note that in terms of the code of good practice um, that was released in 2022, um, that relates to harassment more broadly. So that highlights um, sexual, racial and ethnic um, harassment, but um, it, it goes more broadly than just sexual harassment. And, and that is the, the for the prevention and elimination of that within the workplace. So I think that's the starting point to note that, you know, our law is noting that that is something that's a lot more broad than, than what is considered to be sexual harassment. Now, sexual harassment itself um, is a specific form of harassment and it constitutes unfair discrimination in our law on prohibited grounds of, of sex, gender, and, and sexual orientation. And really what we're looking at is we're looking at a form of an unwanted conduct that is considered to impair one's dignity and create or, uh, a hostile or intimidating work environment. And that may have the effect of inducing submission um, to based on an actual or threatened adverse consequence. And in this case, it is related, for example, to um, the prohibited grounds of, of sex, gender, or, or sexual orientation. So that would be the link of, of that particular um, unfair discrimination ground. So unwanted conduct, um, where, where, yes. do you, where do you draw the lines, especially in a situation where it's an end of the year party, people are, are celebrating, people are, are drinking, what is a no-no? Uh, maybe if somebody you know, holds your hand during the day in the office, it is going to be interpreted very differently when somebody has had a few more drinks. Where do you draw the lines? Because it really can be some murky waters, I believe. Absolutely. So I think really the, the way that this is looked at, um, you know, in our law is isn't going to be an objective assessment based on a case by case basis. And and typically here, um, the things that we look at is, well, what is the context and, and unwanted conduct is, is typically viewed from the person who's actually experiencing the potential harassment. So I think for both employees and employers in these contexts, we need to understand that, you know, from an employer perspective, we need to be creating environments where our employees are feeling safe. There is, of course, an obligation in this regard to ensure that employees are properly trained, that they understand what is okay, what is not okay, um, and, and if they need training or, or and they need policy guidance on that, that employers are putting that forward. Employers also have that obligation to ensure that their work environment is one where their employees feel safe. Now, for employees, they need to ensure that, you know, this is a professional environment. So, yes, we might be at a year-end function. Yes, it might be off-site. Yes, it might involve, you know, alcohol. It's a little bit, it's a relaxed environment. But it's still a work-related event. And employees in that, in that regard are still required to act in a manner that is still conducive to the employment relationship. So there needs to be a caution around one's behavior here. And one needs to know that, you know, in this, in this environment, that there are still obligations to ensure that the way that we're behaving it remains professional. Um, it remains on a basis where we're not going to be making these unwanted advances. And, and really to understand that, you know, if, if we need to call to a policy, if we need to ensure that there's training, let's make sure that that's in place so that there are these gray areas can be eliminated within the workplace. And, and I think you've summed it up uh, so well, Leila. It's still a work environment. Yes, it may be a year-end party, yeah. um, but we're still 
colleagues and, and those boundaries still need to be maintained irrespective of the different environment. So thank you so much, Leila, uh, making us all very cautious as we celebrate the end of the year. That's Leila Musa. She's Senior Associate in Employment Law Practice at Cliff Decker Hofmeyer. Uh, things can go so wrong so quickly, so better air on the side of caution.